Okay, um, again, this is Kelly Clement with Metastock. Uh, just before we get started, I just want to double check. Uh, we had him here a few minutes ago, but Logan, uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Kelly. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, right. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and get things rolling, Logan, and I'll bring you back on in just a moment, okay? It sounds perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, everybody, again, welcome. My name is Kelly Clement. I'm the Director of Sales here at Metastock. Um, I'm really pleased to introduce tonight's webinar. I've known uh, Logan a long time uh, throughout his uh, career here at Metastock and also um, as he's moved on, developed trading systems and now uh, trading professionally. So he's a, he's a great presenter, really understands the markets very, very well, and I'm excited to have him here tonight with us. And I'll do an official introduction here in just a moment. Uh, but uh, as always with our Metastock uh, webinars, the one thing I do need to start with here is actually our disclaimer. So bear with me for just a moment here while we uh, go through the disclaimer. This demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and its accompanying add-ons. It is not a recommendation to buy or sell. It is guidelines to interpreting and using the specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors, traders who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided with connection with the company. So, um, you know, really all we're saying there is there's risk in the market. We're not here to show you uh, or make recommendations on what to buy or sell, but rather show you how to use the systems and strategies. And then it's up to you uh, to place those trades and, and decide what you're going to do. Uh, as we know, again, there is risk in the market, and actually that's exactly what Logan's going to be talking to us about tonight, is how to set your profit targets and set your stops more accurately to help you in your trading. And that's a, what a lot of us are after, is that ability to place better stops and hit better targets. And Logan's done a great job in putting that type of strategy as part of his LCI trading system that he's developed for Metastock. So that's what he's going to be talking about tonight and putting that together for you. So I'm really pleased to go ahead and turn the time over to Logan and give him this opportunity to show you what uh, what he's put together and what he's going to be talking about tonight. So Logan, let's go ahead and get you on here. Awesome. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, can everybody hear me? If you want to go ahead and put in the chat, just make sure that everything sounds good for those who are attending. Um, well, let's go ahead and get started. So. Again, just as a uh, introduction to myself, my name is Logan Connors. Uh, I worked with Metastock uh, for almost five years, and I learned a lot. It was a great experience, and it's a great group of individuals to work with, and I couldn't have ever asked for a better experience. And it really uh, pushed my interest into the markets that much further to where now uh, all I do full-time is trade. That's what I do. I run several different uh, funds, and we, you know, we do very well. And as we know, and what I've come to find is that everything related into the markets really comes down to understanding your risk and what is your potential to gain. So today we're going to go over briefly on what techniques you can utilize and what the LCI system does automatically for you to really establish the stop. Uh, aspect of your trading as well as profit targets. Now as we get into this, just want to make a note as we go through the stuff that I'm going to be talking about today, I'm really going to dig into much more in depth uh, at our traders conference, at the Metastock Traders Conference in Snowbird this year. So today we're really going to kind of look at a, a top, so to speak, or just a piece of it and then I will really dig into the fundamental structure on analyzing risk versus reward ratios at the trading conference. It'll be a much more uh, personable experience, and I'll actually have the opportunity to uh, work with you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis uh, as well and answer your questions more individually, go through examples. Um, so it's a, it's a great opportunity uh, to take advantage of that and, and really ask me questions and ask other market professionals uh, as well as they really dig into their different techniques. And if you want to join me at the conference, um, you can call up Metastock, and I'll get you their contact information in a minute, but you can call up Metastock, and the regular price right now is $6.99. They'll actually bump it down to $5.99 for you. You just have to give them the promo code LCIA. Um, and that'll knock a disc discount off for you, and then you can come and join me for that three-day event and really get your questions answered. 
Now, just another couple things that I want to hit on before we really dig into the meat of the webinar is that a lot of people don't know I do a free trading newsletter. Uh, you can register for it on my website. Um, it's not something I push out every day, so you're not going to be feeling like you're getting spammed. It's something that I push out every week to every couple of weeks. Anytime I really see something in the market that's piquing my interest um, or if I'm pushing out some new training material, it just gives you an opportunity to really see inside my mind on what I think is going on in the market. So it's something that you're not going to expect every day. Um, you know, maybe once a week or maybe once every couple of weeks you'll get an email from me just giving some market insight. So it's a great opportunity there. Now, a lot of the, the a lot of stuff that I'm going to be talking about today um, is within Metastock. So if you're not currently a Metastock subscriber, um, all of the methods that I'm going to go through today and what's programmed comes for free within Metastock. It's not an additional purchase. Um, it's it's included for free. So when you sign up uh, for Metastock, whether it's a subscription version, whether it's a trial version or a purchased version, you're going to get access to my complete system. And uh, you can do that by going to the link uh, at www.metastock.com forward slash L-C-I-A-T. That'll give you a trial. So if you're not a Metastock user, you can go sign up for a free 30-day trial and uh, really take everything I'm going to talk about today for a spin. Also, something else that we're going to be going through today is uh, the developer's guide for the LCIA. Now, I have gone through and I've designed all of these indicators. Now, a lot of us have different trading styles and all of us aren't going to trade the same. We're going to pull bits and pieces of something and kind of make it fit what our strategy is, what we're trying to do. And all of my indicators, they're done outside of Metastock just because of some of the complexities they weren't we weren't able to do them directly within the Metastock coding language. And this guide basically goes through and gives you all of the keys that you need to take all of the indicators, whether it's the stop indicators, uh, the profit target uh, structure, the support and resistance levels, Fibonacci's, everything. And it gives you formula examples on how to use those so you can create your own ideas using all of my indicators that I've already created. Okay, so you can go in and if you can get a discount on that by going to my website, um, lcinvestmentanalytics.com. Right there on the main page, you'll see a banner for the uh, developer's guide. You can click on it and then enter the promo code that you see here on the screen um, at the time of purchase, and that'll give you that $30 discount. So it'd make it $49. Um, and I'll come back to these slides here at the end of the presentation for you guys, uh, but I just wanted to show this at the first, uh, just in case some of you aren't able to make it uh, until the end of the presentation. Um, and then here's some contact information. I'll show this again, um, but you can contact me directly. You're welcome to email me anytime with any questions that you have. I try to really fully support what it is that I'm trying to show you how to do, and, and ultimately my goal is that you get, um, it, it helps you in your trading. It helps you to find success. I, I really um, give credit to this system for helping me in my success and my learning, and I'm just hoping that I'm able to share that with you, which is why it's included for free in Metastock and give you an opportunity to, uh, to find some of that same structure that I've found. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's dig right into the presentation. Now today, again, we're going to be looking at establishing stops and our profit targets. Okay. Now, when it comes to establishing stops and profit targets, this is what really folds or molds into what we would call a money management structure. And by money management, that means risk. Okay. Now, in the chat window, if let me ask you guys this question, and please put your answers in chat. Now, if I trade with a hundred thousand dollars let's say, and I enter $100,000 into the market, what's my risk? What's my risk? I'm interested to see what you guys say. So go ahead and put in the chat. What do you think your risk is? If you put $100,000 into the market, what's your risk? What are you risking? Do we have the chat window up? Hey, Kelly, do we have the chat window up? Yeah. Can you see uh, people's uh, responses there, Logan? 
Uh, is it under questions? Is that where they're doing yeah, it's it? Under questions, correct. Okay. That would be why. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> I'm looking at the wrong screen. Okay. So we've got some answers. 100K, right? It's not so. We, so we've got a couple, couple, couple of two thousand per trade, a hundred grand. Okay, a hundred thousand or more. It's not defined. A hundred k, all of it. A hundred k, a hundred thousand. Okay, all of you that are saying a hundred thousand, you're looking at it with a gambling mentality. Okay, if you go into trading the market, utilizing a gambling mentality, you're going to lose everything. You're going to get lucky, okay? And I'm not saying that traders don't get lucky, but if you go into it with a mentality of saying I'm trading a portfolio of $100,000 and I'm going to risk 100% of it, that's a gambling mentality, okay? 1% risk equals 1,000, right? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to structure with our risk management. Risk is whatever we define that risk to be, okay? The answer is the risk is what we define that to be, whether it's 1% of our portfolio, okay? whether risk is established based off of an individual trade. So maybe I say I'm only going to risk $2,000 per trade regardless of my portfolio size. Okay? Risk is what we make it. Now, obviously, there are going to be times in the market where we can't control risk 100%. If we're trading underlying shares, of the stock, we cannot control it 100%. Okay. Now, what we can control is our rule set that says, if I get to this point, I am out. I'm cutting my loss as close to what my allowed loss is, and I'm out of the market. We have to take away the pride that has us hold into the market and hold into these positions for an extended period of time, which causes these larger losses. And I speak about this from experience. Okay, I've, there have been times where I've had literally close to a 90% accuracy on my trades when I first started, but I only had to have one losing trade to take away all of my winners and then some. Okay, So when it comes to establishing a stop loss and it comes to establishing a profit target, what we're really looking to do is we want to make sure that when we structure a losing trade in relation to a winning trade that we're making more than what we're losing. The example that I use, and if you've joined me for a webinar before, you've heard this example, but the example that I use is if we take a coin and let's say for if it's heads, we, we win or we gain $100, okay? And if it's tails, we lose 50. So we're structuring ourselves to lose $50 each coin flip. But if we get a winning coin flip or it does what we're expecting, okay, we're going to gain $100. Now, I can flip that coin 10 times and let's say I have heads five, of, five times out of 10 and I have tails five times out of 10. So I'm at a 50% rate of getting heads, which is what I initially want. So what is my risk? Well, I lost $250, okay? but then I gained $500. So over the entire portfolio of 250, or excuse me, over 10 trades, I was profitable $250, okay? So what the LCI system does is it's analyzing these movements, and we're gonna go into what we're really looking at in those movements, and you know what you guys are looking for as far as this presentation, but it structures those movements so that when we're looking at our winning trades, we're looking for the higher, you know, the highest probability that, that we can based off the information we have that that particular trade is going to cover what we risk. By doing that, by getting a one-to-one -one at 50% accuracy, we're going to break even on our account. The LCI takes it a step further where we're looking to at least anywhere from two to five to one. By doing that, I don't have to worry so much on accuracy because in my trade management, it's going to end up coming profitable. And that's where you make money in the markets. Okay? 
We've all searched for the Holy Grail. I certainly know I have. And the Holy Grail really comes down to having a structure, a systematic structure that makes sense to you as a trader. The LCI made sense to me because it utilizes those support and resistance levels and being able to take advantage of those reversal signals by analyzing other aspects of the market. That's what made sense to me. And then being able to apply those techniques from those indicators to structure a money management to establish my stops and my profit targets then took that system that much further. Okay? So the stuff that I'm going to talk about today, whether you use it in the LCI or you use it for another system, okay, the outcome is going to be the same. It's going to take a poor system and it's going to make it an okay system. It'll take an okay system, make it a good system. They'll take a good system and make it a great system. Okay? provided that you have the ability to follow those rule structures. Is there any questions on what I just went over? Because you're really going to want to understand that aspect as we get into looking at the technical structure of our stops versus our profit targets and what we're looking to get out of the market. Go ahead and put it in the questions here. Are there any questions? If not, go ahead and say no for me. That's fine, and we'll and we'll move on. But I want to make sure that you understand that aspect of money management. Okay, clear as mud. Good. Okay. Okay, so the key now some of the concepts that I'm going to talk about today, if you've been trading longer than two weeks, you've probably heard of. Okay? Simplicity is the key. Simplicity is the key. Now, some say that the LCI system seems really, <laughs> really difficult or there's a lot to it, and it looks like that at first, but really it's not. There's a lot of lines going on in the chart, but they all represent kind of the same thing. There's really only three aspects that you're following and then the expert commentary breaks it down for you. So simplicity being the key, okay? We need to analyze the following. Time. Okay? Now, time is a huge aspect to trading. A lot of individuals will ask me, a lot of traders ask me, well, do you use tick charts? Do you use range charts? Do you use Renko charts? Do you use all of these non-time-based charts? And my answer is no, I don't. And the reason I don't do that is because time is such a crucial part to trading. Again, time is such a crucial part to trading when it comes to understanding when and when not to trade. And who wants to sit? So one of the trades that I do quite frequently is I trade Forex or currencies. Okay? No one wants to sit in front of the computer for 24 hours analyzing a particular trade. You won't have a life. Okay? So understanding when and when not to trade. When you get some of these range bars like Forex during the Asian markets can move sideways. Okay? And if you're looking at a range bar chart and you look at one bar that moved sideways for six hours, okay? are you wanting to analyze or sit and wait for that bar to change or hit a stop for six hours? I personally don't. And then also with time too, it comes down to what the market's doing. Market trades in days, right? It's like starting and it's like starting a new game, football game. It's got quarters. Your days are your quarters. Your weeks the end of the game, right? So everything is is built around a time structure. And by utilizing that time structure, we can really understand what our movement within relation to time is. And we'll get into that here in just a second. The second point is interval movement. Now, what do I mean by interval movement? And you're correct. You're, I'm not on any charts right now. I'm just looking at the basic screen. We'll get into the charts in a moment. Okay? Just giving you, a, giving you a basic here. So interval movement. Interval movement is the average structure. Okay? Yeah, exactly. So, so Ian says, if you're trading a five-minute chart, you confirm with a bigger time chart or it doesn't matter. So are you asking a question there? 
Ian. If you want to rephrase it. So, so with interval movement, the interval that we're trading, we want to know what the average movement of time in that interval that we're trading. Okay? All of my trading on an intraday basis, I look at a five minute chart. Okay? That's what I prefer to view. Because I feel it's the smallest time frame that I can get to that starts to show an emotional bias, whether it's buying or selling within the price patterns themselves. Okay, anything smaller than that, our computer is just ticking away. It doesn't really give me any really defined evidence of movements. So in my opinion, I utilize a five-minute chart. And then cycle movement is simply the range between highs and lows. Okay, so with the LCI, it's defining our support and our resistance levels. What is our average movement between highs and lows? And if we're looking at a five-minute chart, that cycle movement is going to reflect the average movement of larger time frames. It's going to reflect the movement of an average time frame. So if we look at a cycle on a five-minute chart that tends to be, let's say, 25 pips or $2, whatever the instrument is that we're trading, it really doesn't matter. It's the same structure. But if I know that it's going to move between these cycles between 25 and say 35 points. Okay? If I look at an hourly chart, the range of an hour bar on average might be 25 to 30 points. So we're basically saying over that hour, we've exhausted the average movement that that particular instrument we're trading has to offer. Okay, So that's really what we're going to dig into now. Again, this is just going to be a, uh, an overview today. And if you really want to dig into this a lot uh, more in depth, uh, come join me at the users conference and we'll really go over it um, in a much larger detail. Okay, can everybody see the chart that I put on the screen? Okay, good. All right, so when we're looking at a chart, so right now we're looking at a daily time frame. Now again, when we're analyzing these time frames, it doesn't matter whether we're looking at five minutes, whether we're looking at daily, okay, the concepts that I'm going to be using are going to be the same. So don't let yourself get confused or structured on what I'm going to be explaining here since it's going to be in a daily time frame. Okay? Now, when we're looking at day-to-day -day movements okay, or any movements, whether it's five minutes, 15 minutes, the first thing that we want to structure is we want to structure what? What was the first thing on my list? Test you guys, make sure you're paying attention. What was the first simple item that we look at? Time, exactly. Okay. So we want to look at time. So right now, if we're looking at this chart, we're looking at a daily time frame. So each bar or candlesticks movement. Okay, that we're looking at is going to reflect, I'll make these a little bigger, is going to reflect okay, the total range or movement of price over one day. Okay. Now, who's heard of average true range? Who's heard of ATR? Again, going back to simplicity. Me. <laughs> Good. Yeah. We've all heard of ATR. Okay. Now, what is ATR? ATR is a calculation that looks at the average movement from high to low and it averages it over a time frame. Okay. Which is going to bring us to our interval movement to help us structure that. Now, the ATR calculation or idea. Okay, that we're looking at our average movement within a relation of time. Okay, I do. What I do is I do it slightly different. Okay, so what we're looking at is ATR. Wells Wilder, when he developed it, he utilized some different calculations. Okay, and I kind of undo those calculations and make it a little bit more simple on what we're looking to do because the ATR takes the range of the high and low and it shortens it a little bit. Okay? By shortening it, 
it really gives us a true movement, and that's why he calls it an average true range. Well, I do it slightly different. So what we're looking at is we're looking at I or excuse me, we're looking at Facebook. And the reason we're looking at Facebook is because we just got this signal, and I'm looking to trade Facebook on a pullback signal heading up. Okay, based off their financials, they look like a very good trade. You know, so I'm just sitting back and seeing if we can break the high of this of this signal, this entry. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to analyze our average range movements. So we're looking at our high to low of each day. So high to low, high to low, high to low. Now, what is the distance okay, between these two points? And that's what we want to analyze. So if I know, let's say, for example, I have an average range movement, um, let's say over on a daily chart, I use 10 because I'm looking at two weeks. Okay, I'm looking at two-week movement. So if I go to a two-week chart or if I go to a weekly chart, I have an understanding. Okay, but side side note here. If you're utilizing indicators, this is something very important. It's very simple, and a lot of us tend to overlook it. When you're looking to utilize moving averages, okay, oscillating indicators, whatever the indicator you're looking to use, write this down. You want to utilize time inputs. So let's say for a moving average, for example. Okay, a lot of us ask what type of moving average or what value of moving average should I use? The moving average, we want to put our our period values to relate to our larger time frame intervals. So our interval movement. So if I'm looking at a moving average of a daily chart, what type of average do I want to look at? to give me a weekly picture. How many daily bars do I have in a week on average? Obviously we have holiday weekends, but on average, five, exactly. So when we're analyzing on a shorter time frame, okay, on a shorter time frame average, we want to look at a five period. That's gonna give us a basic picture on a daily time frame of the intra movements of a weekly bar. If I want to then if I want to look at it over a two week period, it would be 10. So then on average, the 20 period moving average, okay, a lot of people are familiar with it. How many trading days are there in a month? Someone's got to have 20. Exactly. We've got 20 days. Can you guys see how by utilizing those averages, we want to take pictures and identify it in relation to our interval movement? Does that make sense? So if we're analyzing that, we want to keep that in a structure. That's going to keep you on point with the larger time frames. Okay? A lot of individuals say, well, I use a 13 and I use use a, a 27 and a 36, okay? They're really missing the point on what we want to look at in our average. And we want to take those averages and relate them to our interval that we're trading, okay? The time interval that we're basing our analysis and our trades off of at that moment, okay? Sorry for the side note. But so when it comes, so, so taking that side note and putting it into our average true range, what type of averaging would I then want to use on a daily time frame? Let's say I'm wanting to look at my average movements over the last two weeks. On a daily time frame, I like to analyze two-week movements because I like to trade options on a daily time frame, and it splits the month up. So I'm not quite using a month. So I'm looking at half the month or a two-week period, which would be 10, right? So I'm looking at averages over a 10-period time frame. Now, what happens when we get a really large bar 
or a really small bar in that time frame. What happens? So if we're looking at this day where we had this signal, we can say, well, over the last 10 bars, this bar was significantly larger. Same with this big up bar that we had here. Let me get my circles here so we can draw. Right? So if we're looking at these two bars, wouldn't we say that they're quite larger than average? So what we need to make sure that we do, and this is something that a lot of us fail to use, any type or anytime we're moving any sort of average over time, okay, whether it's establishing our stops, our profit targets, or any type of indicator, we fail to realize these outliers, and they skew the data. They skew the data. Okay. Now some might say, well, it doesn't skew the data. It shows me a clear, perfect picture. Well. It really does because when we're establishing our stops, we want to know how much room on average can I get this, okay? How tight can I get my stop because it's going to allow me to leverage more shares, which then leads me to not have to have as high of a profit target. And we'll get into that here in just a second, okay? So what we want to look at is when you're taking an average, Okay, over the last two weeks, we want to find the single highest movement, and we want to take the single lowest movement, okay, and we want to take them out of the data set. So why do we do that? Why would I take the highest movement out, and why would I take the lowest movement out? because we're cutting out the extremes. We're cutting out the extremes. So I can get a more accurate data set, exactly. Because there are going to be times in the market where it just goes crazy. You have these huge movements. And those are the times that we hope that we're in the trade, provided that that huge movement is in the direction that we're looking for it to move. Okay. But when we're establishing our stops, we don't want to set a stop on an extreme. Okay? We don't want to set it on an extreme because it's we don't need it. If the market's going to take us out on an extreme, on a not average movement and not average day, something happens where we get taken out, you know what? That's part of trading. We want to trade to the consistency. We don't want to trade the abnormality. Because what's the problem with abnormalities? We don't know when they're going to happen. We don't know when they're going to happen. Sometimes we can look at footprints. Sometimes we might be able to see a news story or an economic story okay, that might give us some hint that something might be coming. Okay? Earnings is a scheduled abnormality that you're going to see with prices gapping up or down based off of earning reports. So that's something we can plan for, but the most, most often we can't. So we want to plan for standard movement and then let the market take us out. If it's going to take us out, if it's going to move with us, then it's a bonus. Then it's a bonus check. Okay. So are there any questions on analyzing the average movements? Okay, so let me break this down for are, are any of you intraday trading using Metastock Pro? So intraday trading, let's say, is FX or stocks or futures S&P E-mini? Anyone day trading? Because if I've got some day traders here, I'll go over a quick day trading scenario. If you are, say yes. All right, there we go. Okay, E-mini. So when we're looking at whether it's FX or if we're looking at uh, E-minis or stocks, okay, we need to understand our time frame. So if we're trading stocks on an intraday basis, okay, when is the most volatile time of the day? It's in the morning because you've got all the after-hour market uh, orders coming in. It's all over the place. If you look at the tick ranges, they're crazy. Okay, Look at the E-mini. When are the appropriate times to trade the E-mini? 
during the US session. That's when you're going to get your most movement. That's when you're going to be established. If you're trading FX, the best movement you're going to get with FX, there's two different things you need to look at. One, the European and US session are always going to give you more movement than the Asian session. Almost always, 90% of the time. Okay? But then you also need to look at what country of FX you're trading. So if I'm trading the Japanese yen, when am I going to well, when am I likely going to get a lot of movement based off of economic data? During the Asian market, which is the afternoon for US or during the middle of the night if you're over in Europe. Okay, or right right in the morning if you're over in Asia. Okay. So if we're establishing and we're looking at okay, we want to find what our average movement is. So we're taking on a daily time frame, I like to take the last two weeks, okay? On a five minute chart, okay? Remember, I say a five minute chart to me personally, I feel is the smallest time frame you can get that's gonna give you a hint of what price action is doing in relation to price levels. Okay? It's gonna give me a hint. A one minute chart, it's just, it's just, it's just computers placing trades. There's nothing to see, okay? up to a five minute chart. A five minute chart you can sort of start to see it. Okay? So if we're day trading we're looking at a five minute chart and if I'm going to take my average range, okay, my average range which again is what? I'm taking the high minus the low over the last X amount of days and I'm taking out the outliers. So I'm minusing the smallest value and I'm taking out the largest value. And that's what I'm looking to average. So if I'm trading a five minute chart, and if I want to look at price movement over an hour, what should my value be of my average range movement? If I'm looking again, so a five minute chart, or an easy way to ask this, how many five minute bars are in an hour? Twelve, exactly. So what, if I want to look at price movement in relation to an hour, I want to look at my average true range, well not average true range, but our, our range calculation, okay? We want to look at our range, average range, over the last 12 bars. Now if I want to break that down again and if I want to say, okay, now I want to look at my average range over the last 30 minutes, which is the smallest I would personally recommend to you. How many bars are within 30 minutes? It's easy. We just take half of uh, our hour, right? So we've got six bars. So if we want to look at our average movement within a 30 minute time frame, we're going to look at our average range minus our outliers, our largest and our smallest, over the last six bars. Okay, so when you're building these intraday models, you want to analyze and see, okay, in relation to time, in, the order, in other words, sitting here in front of this computer, how long do I want to sit here, okay? And does the market you're trading, like the stock market, does it have a whistle at the end that says everything's done, okay? Forex trades all the time, but heading into the week, okay? And that's what we look at. John, can you clarify your question? You mean what do I divide it by? So if you're saying if we remove the two outliers, are we dividing it by 10 if it's a, if it's a value of 12? If that's your question, then yes. If that's your question, then yes. If not, please rephrase it. Okay. So that's what we want to analyze. So if we go into the chart, and we pull up the LC, let's go into the commentary for the LCI. And we look above this last signal. Okay. It's giving us a stop level of 84.63, okay, 
how do I calculate the remaining eight periods? Or are you asking like to for, to do it formula wise, John? And if so, remind me at the end of the presentation, and I'll answer that in a better in a better way. Okay, formula wise, yeah, we can do it formula wise, but uh, um, and I'll explain that to you so that it makes sense. But ask me that after the presentation, okay? And we'll for those who want to see, you know, kind of what you would do formula wise, I'll kind of point you in the in the right direction. Or if you want help on it. Um, I do offer programming as well, and you can email me. Okay, so if we're looking at if we're looking at a stop, we can see that based off of our long entry, it's giving us a stop of 84.63. So if I look at 84.63, which is yeah pretty close to that level okay, for visual purposes, did I miss? Okay, if I were to have another outlier of that bar, am I giving myself enough room? Am I giving myself enough room? Yes, I am. Okay. Thanks, John, for coming. I appreciate it. So if we're looking at the movement, okay, you can see that by doing that, it's giving us enough room that if we're placing that trade, we're going to be getting as tight as we can so that we can buy as many shares we can within our established risk. So what we want to take is we calculate, yeah, exactly, a good risk to reward. But remember, because the LCI is calculating it for us, and it's calculating it out so that what? It's calculating it automatically without the outliers. So, you know, sometimes we think, oh, I need to have those in there with appropriate data set. We don't. It's going to give us more true to this. And then now another quick secret I'll give you okay, is we want to calculate that based off of the closing price. Entry, you always, in my experience, okay, the best confirmation that you can utilize within a market is if a price breaks a high or low. If we're looking to short, trading the low. Unless you've got a system that's a reversal-based system, but even on that reversal signal, I suggest trading the low. Like the LCI is a reversal-based system. We want to look for the breaks of the low or high. Okay? It's just it's, it's a good confirmation practice. It's the most simple to utilize. Okay? However, with our stop, we want to calculate our stop in relation to the closing price. Okay? The closing price is the more, I don't know how, how I would phrase this, it's, it's the consolidation of the game. It's where the game ended up. You know, if we're looking at it in, in sports terms, we have you know, high emotional periods, low emotional periods, the team gets up, it gets down, and at the end, that's where it ends. Okay? So when we look at establishing, we want to look at the closing price. It's very important that that's where we base our stop from. So on this particular signal, I'm looking to enter at the high. Okay, I'm looking to enter at the high. And that's where I'm looking to place my stop. Okay, is based off of that closing price. That'll keep you in that good relationship so now, how do we establish profit targets? Okay, that's, that's a huge question that everyone asks. And actually, the most difficult question you have to ask yourself is, where am I going to put this stop? Okay. But once we already have the stop defined, once we already have it defined, our profit targets are defined for us. Okay. Let me explain. When we're looking at movements, okay, when we go back to the coin scenario, what do we want to get as far as our risk versus our reward? In our coin scenario, what was our risk versus our reward value? Two to one or more, exactly. Okay, so anything greater than one to one 
is going to allow you to make money at 50% or better. Obviously, the higher the ratio that you can get, the less you have to be successful on your accuracy of entry. Now, if you can take a system like the LCI that really does a good job on both, okay, that's going to take it from being a good system to a great system. Okay, So the profit target, we are wanting to get, again, we want to be two or one to more. Okay. Now let me ask this question. Does anybody that uses stops, okay, does anybody have a target of when price gets to that point, you set it to break even? You set your trade to break even. Does anybody do that? Yes, good. No, no, okay. So for those of you that do, how do you calculate your break-even point? When should you move a trade to break-even? It should be the same as or close to what? Your risk difference. Because in the end of the day, we want to trade. We don't want to get our one-to-ones. We want to get our two-to-ones and greater. We want that greater movement. But we don't want to give up a profit if we're just going to get a small move and the market decides to come back against us. So let me ask you this question. If, if we place this trade right now, and let's look at our targets here. So the LCI says based off of our movement, okay, we have a one-to-one -one risk in the initial target. Okay? So our initial target, if we get to an initial target and our stop is still at our same level, then what do we have? Is our is our risk at that point still in the same relation to what it was when we first entered the trade? It's not. It's not the same. So if we move up to our first initial price target, we're moving down. We're moving down what? A one to two ratio now at that point. Because remember, the money that you make is still money that you're going to lose. In the game of trading, and the reason why I developed this trailing stop is because we want to give enough movement for something to move. Okay? We want to give it enough movement. But at the same time, we don't want to give it too much movement that we're giving back a lot of our profits. That was one of my problems early on when I was trading is I would catch these great runs and I'm thinking it's going to run further. And if I really just would have analyzed the average movement and exhausted its point and started coming back, okay? But the trailing stop is really going to give you an op, you know, a, a a good opportunity to trail giving it enough movement okay but not as much and that is everyone's problem absolutely the the hardest part about trading is going to be exiting your trade 100 percent the hardest part about trading is exiting your trade because that's when the human emotions kick in most of us when we enter a trade entering a trade is pretty easy some of us get too excited and we don't follow our system or we get scared and we don't follow our system. But the majority of us, if we get a buy signal on something, we're ready to go, we're ready to trade, we're getting our money in there. We've got that excitement of making money. Where the real emotions come in is now we have to close that position. Now is when we have the fear of, well, as soon as I exit, it's just going to keep going. Or... So we leave, we leave it in, and then it comes against us. Now we're like, oh, don't worry. It's, it's just having a retracement. It's going to go back up. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. Now pretty soon you've got a losing trade. And then you're holding on to it because you can't afford to get out is how we feel. And we've all been there. I've been there. Okay? One time too many I've been there. So when we're analyzing the structure, I talked with a professional trader several years ago. And he told me, Logan, 
you can always get back into the market. You can always get back in. If the market takes you out, you can always get back in. And that's what you have to look to do is you look, have to look to get back in. So what we want to do is if, if we get price moving up above our initial target of 9097, which is giving us around that one-to-one -one risk ratio, okay, that one-to-one, -one, we want to move our stop up, move it to break even. Okay. And then our profit target. So then if we're looking at a 94.73, what the LCI is doing is it's taking the stop. Okay, remember, we're taking this average distance. Okay. So it takes what our stop is in relation. And then it says, okay, if we get a movement up, what is the average movements that have happened historically okay, over our cycles from high to low? What's the movement that's happened in relation to what are we analyzing our stop? And then establishes that profit target. So our primary target, if we're looking at our primary target, is typically going to be anywhere from 3 to 4 to 1. Okay? 3 to 1 to a 4 to 1, that's what the primary target is designed to be in relation to. And it takes into consideration, again, those previous resistance levels. So if we look at the highest point of, that's happened over here, which was 89.40, okay, you can see that we're just barely breaking that previous high before we're into our one-to-one. -one. So if we look back, let's look back at some of these historic, historical examples now that we've got now that we've got some price moving in here, we'll just look at uh, this example. So we had our entry. So where was our initial target? 77.56. Right there. 77.56 was our initial target. So we got to that point and saying, okay, our first point that we're going to get to, if we're going to get exhausted, Okay, we're going to be looking to get exhausted at 77.56. Okay, but look, if I set my stop to break even, so I'm not losing anything on the trade, and price comes back against me, did I lose anything? Did I lose anything on this trade? No, I didn't. And then where's my primary target on this trade? 81.52. Here's my primary. Here's my initial. Here's my primary, and what was my risk? 70. Okay. 70, 87. So here's my risk. Okay. A little higher. So you can see that. Okay. And then as we get above our initial is when we want to look to start trailing. Okay, so I get a lot of people that ask me when you're trailing, when you're using the trailing stop, I want to see my price. Okay, I want to see price and I want to see the stop break up above that initial target. I'm looking to get out of a trade when my trailing stop is up above my initial profit target. And that's when I'll start to trail. Okay, that's when I start to trail. What am I doing? So now I'm allowing, so I'm saying, okay, if I, if, I if I structure my risk management appropriately so that I'm only losing $1,000 per trade, again, the coin example, $50, okay, in my risk distance, price gets to a one-to-one, -one, I move it to break even so that if it does come back on me, I'm out, and then I either one look for another opportunity to get in, okay, and that's where I structure it. Okay. Are there any questions? We're running out of time here, so we're gonna we're gonna close. But are there any questions on what I'm going over? So again, when we establish stops versus profit targets in wrapping up, okay, we establish our profit target based off of what our stop movement is giving us. Okay, 
based off of what our stop moving is giving us, that can give us a picture. Okay, that can give us a picture of what we want to do moving forward. Do you see a lot of pullbacks after initial target? It depends, Ian, and it's mo that's more of a complexity question. If you want to talk to me about it, if you want to talk to me about it later on, you can email me. Um, but I would on pullbacks, I utilize a re-entry based off of the LCI scoring. So you can see here we get a bounce off of the initial, and I'd look for a re-entry off of the scoring here on this bar. Now, when I'm looking for the scoring, I want the scoring to be above above 65. 65 or greater. Okay. Is there a write-up on the system? Yes, there is in the Metastock help, as well as I have gone through and I've created a lot of training videos on YouTube that you can go through and watch. And it's all free. Okay. You just go in and you can watch them to try to give you that sense of what the system is doing. Um, what is this book about that costs 49? So, so Don, this is a so all of the indicators that you see, so with the meta stock, so the so the support and resistance level. So if I take out the green lines that I drew here, so let's say you want to run a scan based off of just one support level, but it's something that I'm not utilizing within the system itself or programmed in, but you want to create your own strategy around an indicator I've done. So I had a lot of questions on individuals wanting to scan for their for volume. Okay. They wanted to scan for their own Fibonacci levels. If you, if I apply the Fibonacci template, uh, let's see here. Oh. And then, so if they wanted to scan for their own Fibonacci retracements, okay, and they wanted to utilize the scoring indicator up at the top which is analyzing my reversal scoring. So when we get these spikes, that indicates that we've got a higher bullish scoring reversal versus the red spikes indicating a higher probability selling reversal. Okay. So that book basically goes through all the specifics on how to pull out those uh, the DLL keys. So because of some of the complexity behind this, we had to write it outside of Metastock and have it brought in. So you have to know all of the codes that go with each indicator on how you can create your own system. So I wrote this book, it has like three to five formula examples for different conditions for each indicator. So that way it's teaching you how you can take my indicators and apply them to you. But that's a great question. And essentially the reason for the cost is it just supports the website downloading. That's it. It's a means to support the download. <laughs> so. But good question. So in in finishing up, so again, if you want to learn, so again, going over, keep it simple. Okay, you got you got to eat. Well, it's it's, it's yeah, keep it keep it self sustaining. Um, in in closing, okay, guys, keep it simple. Okay, you don't have to utilize some complex indicator to establish stop. Understand your time frames. Okay, what are the time frames that traders are looking at? Daily, weekly. How long does it take for an option to extend? How long do I want to trade for? Am I looking at an hour, four hour? And then utilize those averages within that time frame itself. That's what's going to keep you in sync in a time perspective and give you an idea of when you've exhausted that movement. Okay. Interval movement and cycle movement. Again, those kind of tie into understanding the larger time frames in relation to your averages on the smaller, which is where you want to analyze your signals. Okay. Again, just as a reminder, if you want to go over this in more detail, I'm going to go over this very topic, okay, more on the exit strategy, understanding exits, and a lot on money management, knowing exactly how many shares you should buy, how many contracts you should buy and how you can almost eliminate your risk. Okay? Almost eliminate your risk. Now, the, I'm not going to say eliminate it 100% because you always have risk in the market. What I mean by eliminate risk is keep yourself without losing on that anomal, anomaly. Okay? 
keep my risk within a thousand dollars. If my risk per trade is going to be a thousand dollars or one percent or whatever I establish my risk to be, and I'll go over techniques on how to find that out at the conference, but it'll keep you trading longer. You'll never blow out an account, okay? As long as you follow those simple rules, and I'll be going over that at the MetaStock conference, and it'll give you an opportunity to talk with me personally. Okay, and I'm happy to go over with you guys as long as it takes in the afternoon. If we have to do a class there for two hours and you want to stay, I'm happy to do it. So it's a great opportunity. Again, trading newsletter. If you go to my website, lcinvestmentanalytics.com, you'll see the newsletter down at the bottom. It's not a spamming thing. It's just basically saying, hey, if I see something in the market I like, I'm going to send it to you. If you are looking for... Uh, training and you want to get up to date on when I send new training out on the LCI or topics like our webinar we had today, you'll be first in line to get that information. And then again, going back to the developer's kit, this is for the person who wants to take everything that I've done, my work, and they want to tweak it and apply it to work they've already done. And it's fully supported. If you have any questions on it, you can always email me and I'm here to assist anytime. And you can do that by utilizing the code here at the LCIA SPTW-49. So again, LCIA SPTW-49. And that'll give you a $30 discount. So it's $49. And that includes future updates as well. So if there's an update, a change to it, you'll get an email that says there's been a change, it'll give you a free download. Okay, pretty easy, pretty slick. And then again, if you don't have MetaStock, okay, you can get a free trial of MetaStock, which includes the LCI training system. It includes the system that goes over everything I talked about today. It's free. Okay? I gave it to you in hopes that it's going to make you a better trader. As long as you can take one thing off of what I've talked about or one thing that my system provides and it can make you better, then that's what I'm looking for. Okay? It's free to you if you have Metastock. And if you want a free trial, you can go to metastock.com forward slash L-C-I-A-T. Here's contact information. Again, you can email me directly at the info at lcinvestmentanalytics.com and I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay? Again, I worked at Metastock and I know it like the ins and outs of my hand. And if you have any questions, you can let me know. You can visit me at the website, and then if you need Metastock's contact information, here's their direct contact information. I do believe uh, that they still might have some sales representatives there. If you don't have it and you want to get a trial, you can call them up. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. Are there any last-minute questions um, that you guys might have? Oh, and yeah, so the mention code on the... Um, on the conference, if you want to join me there for the personal event, it's LCIA. So if you call up Metastock using the, the phone number or email that you see here and tell them you want to register for the conference, you can use the code LCIA is the code that you'll use. Any questions? Last minute questions that I can help address? Perfect. Doesn't look like it. If you think of something later on again, Send me an email, and I'll get back to you uh, as quickly as I can. Um, thank you to Kelly for having me on here, and uh, thank you guys for joining me. Um, all of you, best of luck in your trading. Hopefully, I was able to give you some information that helps. Thank you so much. Take care, and have a good night. Well, thank you again, Logan. Uh, thanks for taking your time to uh, share your wealth of knowledge with us and uh, what you've put together. And again, uh, we encourage you to come uh, and meet Logan at the uh, Metastock Users Conference. It'll be a uh, very educational weekend full of information like you've just gotten. Uh, but you'll be able to sit one-on-one -on -one with these presenters and learn more about uh, Metastock and its tools and your trading and talking about that. So we encourage you to come to the conference and uh, learn more there. And also, if you don't have Metastock, take the opportunity to give it a try. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.